Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Natasha Jamison, host of Natasha's Lips, Tips and Great Flips. On our show, we address overall wellness and provide expert advice necessary for a balanced life. This is my passion and I hope that I inspire you to live your own. We have an incredible show for you today as we welcome CPA men's national physique athlete, Andrew Camps. He is here to share his amazing story of his transformation that may inspire you to do the same. Also joining us is Matthew Gardner, founder of Synchronicity Durham, an organization created for making good communities better. We'll be talking about his life as a troubled youth, how he overcame adversities, to currently being a trusted advocate for his community. But first, we are talking trends with the lovely Gail Harrington. Welcome back, Gail. Hi, Natasha. I always love saying that. Welcome back, Gail. I'm so happy to be know. here. <laughs> That's great. So today we have two top trends. Yes. We have the gray hair movement, and we also have beikyukyo. Beikyukyo. I mean, it's a mouthful, but it's the but superhero. You said it beautifully. Did I? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the alternative to retinol now, yes. the natural alternative. Or as they're calling it these days, retin alt. Ren retin alt, exactly. So, the gray hair movement, women all over the world and in every age group, they're embracing their gray. Okay, they're veering away from, you know, coloring their hair, kind of going more with the movement of having a personal choice. Right. To embrace what naturally happens. Yeah. So yeah, this and it's is all a, about choice. It is, is all about great, choice. But, but <laughs> how, what is your choice before we continue? Never. Never. How about you? No. Natasha can't handle a quarter inch no. of no. No. And why is no. that? Natasha? I don't know because my son goes, Mommy, your hair and your face don't match. Thank God, I don't know what to say. There's a lot of gray, but women are loving this and we are saluting these incredible women. Yes. Um, if you want to embrace your gray, there is maintenance with that. Mm -hmm. We have to mm -hmm. make sure that we tell people this. Talk about the maintenance, you're a professional. Yes, absolutely. So um, the transition from going from color to going gray is really difficult. A lot of women will tell you, oh, just cover it, just cover it, because it's so harsh. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep that in mind. You do have to regularly maintain it because it does lose its luster. Mm -hmm. It can turn colors like more yellow, mm -hmm. yellow, orange, just, de you know, it depends mm -hmm. on the kind of gray that you have. Yeah. You know, you do have to style and blow dry it because it will not reflect color the same way. So styling is a commitment. All of these things are, I think, a yeah. commitment. It's a little bit more wiry, so you need to have more conditioning agents. Right. So I think that you people need to be aware that you don't yeah. just get a pass. You need to, you know, kind of put it into mm -hmm. perspective that, you know, one set of things that maybe you didn't want to do, now you're looking at the opposite yes. side. And I think it's great that women are choosing at whatever age to, you know, embrace their gray. Mm -hmm. The fact is the fact, you're gonna look older. And that's just how it is. We're not talking about the colors as a stylist. I feel like I need to address this to the professional, for every professional. Uh, when, when, when girls or women are getting these avant-garde colors of gray, steel gray, gun gray, lilac gray, you know, blue yes, gray. Yes, Instagram has exploded oh, with huge. all of this. Yeah. And the, the movement for uh, actresses like Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande, yeah. these are actual colors. So they have a pigment in them right. to make it, you know, more so, so that it's pleasing to more, like more skin tones. Yeah. This is not just, you know, going gray. So you have to keep in mind. And I really want to stress that, you know, you need to veer away and think twice before trying to kind of mimic these trends and, you know, going after these colors on your own because you can get into a lot of trouble. And see a professional, ladies. Always see a professional. I really think that because we are trained in this, there's a lot of chemistry involved. I mean, I teach students. Like, there's a lot of science and chemistry involved. Y once you break those bonds, it's like you have to, it's gone. It's a chemical haircut. Right. So we are going to go to Bake You Heal, which is the natural alternative to retinol. Mm -hmm. This is huge mm -hmm. news because there was nothing on the market that mimicked retinol. Retinol being uh, basically an ingredient that helps with wrinkles and, it's you know. The, it truly is the gold standard. It is. For it skin is. care at this Firmness. point. Yeah. Collagen, you know, we're looking at collagen rejuvenation yeah. and lifting and all the different, you know, skin pigmentation issues yes. are, you know, it can remove those. Yeah. This is a natural form of it. Mm -hmm. 
So basically, it is an extract from the bob chi plant that was used in Chinese medicine for skin treatment. For centuries. For a long time. Yeah. It just recently been brought to the Western mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really huge that it can address these things and mimic retinol. Retinol can be a little bit irritating to some skin types. Right. And, and drying. Uh, and Especially in the winter. Absolutely. So yes. this could be a good wintertime replacement. Of for course, or retinol. replacement altogether. Yeah. I have no idea about the price point. I mean, it right. still is quite relatively new. Yeah. It might be double the, the price of retinol. Right. So Where would we find this? We would Natasha. find it in you know drug stores and your specialty stores that you know kind of cater to skincare. Right. So that's where you're going to be looking. Or even online, I'm sure they're going to have a, a, an array of brands that are right. you know helping you kind of purchase these things online. Right. Should we tell the ladies how it's spelt? Oh gosh, how it's spelt. <laughs> Um, I have hit the way that I pronounce it okay. here. Bake you heal. That's how right. I wrote it. Down. I think it's B A C H, H I O I I O L something, something like, like that. that yes. but I don't know. You can find it online. Yes, you can find it online for sure. But I think that this is like a really great alternative for ladies with sensitive skin, mm -hmm. rosacea, eczema. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. sparingly mm -hmm. to use the product. And perhaps who prefer a more natural. This is it. To this is it. Would you try it? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you? Me too. Of course. Yeah. Of course, of course. So we'll maybe come back another time. I love my retinol, that. but if there's some, I mean, because my skin is tough and oh, I just love it. But yeah. <laughs> if I can find something that works just as hard, yeah. you know, depending on the price point, absolutely. Yeah. So we're almost out of time. Thank you for being on the show as always. I love having you as my sidekick. I love being here. It's good. And up next, we welcome Andrew Camps. Stay with us. Natasha's Lips, Tips, and Great Flips is sponsored by... AMMA Ajax Mixed Martial Arts Academy, offering classes in Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for all men and women. Sign up now for your free one month membership. Also offering Women's Strength and Conditioning Body Blast Boot Camp includes a one week free trial. St. Nadala Macedonian Orthodox Church, located in Ajax, Ontario, offering banquet hall facilities for your weddings, celebrations, and special events, accommodating up to 250 guests. Welcome back. Here with us today is CPA Men's National Physique Athlete, Andrew Camps. He is here to share his personal story about overcoming physical and mental barriers that transformed not only his life, but inspiring others to transform their own. Before we talk to Andrew, I would like to share his before and after pictures of his weight loss journey. First, Andrew at 30, weighing over 300 pounds, and next, as a top competitor in bodybuilding competitions. Amazing. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Before we begin, we need to give the viewers a moment <laughs> to take it all in and recover after seeing you on camera. <laughs> You're welcome. So anyhow, I didn't mean to embarrass you, but I had to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> so Andrew, tell us how you ended up 300 pounds at 30. Just simple bad eating habits, you know, um, and just ignorance, I think, just on my part. Mm -hmm. I was busy with my career. Uh, my family and just allowed myself to develop really bad eating habits and just over the years through my 20s I just gradually yes. went over that barrier of, of that 300 pound mark and and uh, yeah just lost control of it yes so. absolutely well that's what it is right mm -hmm. it's a lack of control putting yourself on the list I know you have four kids life mm -hmm. happens all of those things but what was the major circumstances behind you know, you changing and transforming your life. Well, as you said, I have four kids. Yes. So I was sitting with a life insurance agent at the time. Right. And they, uh, they looked at me and said I was high risk, um, mostly because of my weight mm -hmm. and my size and just my overall physical activity, which was nil. So just, and that was sort of just a, a light bulb that That's went off in was. my head that something needs to change because, you know, you look at your four little kids. Yes. At the time they were little and uh, you had to make a change. Yes. So. Did, that, did that scare you where you kind of never even maybe realized like how <coughs> serious this was? Like you could have left like four children without Abs a dad, really? Absolutely. Especially when you're sitting talking about life insurance. Yes. So they're telling op you. Opens your eyes to say, you know, you're more at risk of not being there for them mm -hmm. at, a sooner, at an earlier age. And they don't want to cover you yeah. at a regular rate, not I guess. Not at a regular rate anymore. Not at no. a regular rate. No. How long was your process in developing your fitness and weight loss? Um, it was just... 
Because you know, it doesn't I, take, it's not one day, it's not overnight, no. and it takes forever to take it off and No, it was, it was just once that light bulb went off, it was just more just starting to change my eating habits, okay. just getting rid of the junk food, okay. uh, starting to eat regular meals, right. and then I did a little bit of exercise at home as I okay. felt more comfortable, mm -hmm. then I joined a gym. Then I okay. started to go to a gym and slowly just went every, every day, you know, uh, and just kind of developed those habits to get there more and more often. And then it became, as I was starting to see results, it became more and more right. of something I kept wanting to do because like, I was motivated by the results and mm -hmm. was happy with the results. Yeah. So I want to ask you about like your, the commitment, like from your family. Did you have support? Because <clears throat> sometimes, you know, family can say, what is he doing? Yeah. Obviously, like, you know, you've lost the weight now. What are you doing now? Like, you don't need to take it that far. Yeah. Did you have any issues with that? I mean, definitely initially, everybody was supportive because mm -hmm. that was getting pretty big, obviously, and losing the weight. Right. Everybody was much happier about sure. that. Obviously, leading into more of what I do now with competing and more mm -hmm. of the extreme that I do. Um, sure, there's a little bit of skepticism at the sure. beginning and what are you doing, why do you need to do that, why are you starving yourself, you right. know, which you're not, by yes, the way. Yes, of course not. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, so yeah, there's a little bit of skepticism later on mm -hmm. as I started getting into the bodybuilding, competing body part of my, my life. Why do you think the weight climbs so high at that point? I mean, really, there's a lot of people that maybe don't put themselves on the lift, don't work out, and eat not a very healthy diet. They don't reach those levels. Right. It's what happened? It's, it's, it's just... Poor eating, I, I, you know, just, you're just so focused on your career and you think you're invincible in your 20s mm -hmm. and then you just sort of, it catches up to you. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't eating breakfast, which, oh, okay. you know, everybody knows that's probably the most you important cannot skip meals. meal yes. of the day. They, that that, that yes. motto is, is yeah. very, very true, you know, so I just put myself on more of a regular eating schedule. Mm -hmm. Nothing scientific to it at the time. Mm -hmm. It was just regular eating schedule, eating healthy mm -hmm. and eliminating all the junk eating at nighttime. Yeah. So. What would you say to somebody that's like watching you right now? Because you're going to obviously inspire a lot of people, especially when they see the before and after. Mm -hmm. I saw your picture and I didn't believe it was you. <laughs> I had to do like the, let me really look and I could see the facial features that were the same. Right. How would you tell them, like what would advice, advice would you give them to start their own like journey to fitness and wellness? Just make the decision to do it. It's worth it. You know, once you put the work in and the time in, yeah. there's, a, there's a bit of sacrifice, oh, a lot of sacrifice yeah. to it to a certain extent but it's definitely worth it mm -hmm. down the road, especially if you have a family, kids, yes. and you're thinking about them and your future and yeah. being able to do things with them that are more active. Okay. You know, it makes a big difference. But what if they feel like, I just, I don't even know where to start. Like, where do I start? Right. Where do I start? Do I start with like, you know, just doing like 10 push-ups? Yeah, I mean, Do I start just changing one meal? There's simple things of just doing things at home. I mean, I think most, 80% of everything is diet, diet. You know, changing what you're putting into your mouth right. and how you're eating. Being mindful, yeah. um, you know, because we can do 100 sit-ups, right. but, but if, if you go eat ice cream in. afterwards or, or donuts, then yes. you're really not going to see any results from it or see anything from it. So it comes both. Like yeah. Diet is probably the hardest yes. thing for people to structure mm -hmm. and create consistency in. Yes. And then getting to the gym is more nervousness, people feeling awkward and nervous yes. going to the gym, which I did, yeah. you know, being that heavy. Yes. I just... I just put myself there. Yes. And uh, slowly. And consistently. Right, consistently. Regularly. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Why do you think you're so driven to transform yourself at 45 for bodybuilding, <clears throat> for anything? What drives you? Because, um, you know, for most people, they'd be like, you know what? I'm, you said it. They're, I'm too old. You know, yeah. I can't do this. It's too hard. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Um, for you, what is it? It's just seeing how far I can take it, you yeah. know, um, it's, it's setting a goal. And, okay. and obviously those goals started from when I started just losing a little bit of weight mm -hmm. and just slowly progress from there. Mm -hmm. And now the goal is to, you know, compete on a higher level. I'm on a national level now and trying right. to compete hopefully in the future on a pro level. So that's, that's my goal. So and you just keep pushing it's yourself, just pushing myself. And, and again, it's more for my own self. You need you a know, goal. Yeah, you need a goal. to be driven. Yeah. You know, my kids are motivated yeah. by it. it. It sets an example. You know. So looking at yourself at 30, mm -hmm. 300 pounds, what would you tell yourself? <laughs> really, if you could go back and you could change anything, what would you tell Drop them? Drop that donut. Drop <laughs> that donut. Mouth. Don't eat that donut. Stop Drop eating it. it. Yeah. Um, just wake up, you yeah. know, and just understand that we all think we're young and we think we're invincible, mm -hmm. you know, because I used to eat very heavy as a young teenager, but I was very, very thin. Uh -huh. And then just eat those eating habits trans transitioned into my adulthood, yes. having kids, being yes. married at the time. Yes and just, you know, so just don't think you're invincible and don't be naive that, you know, it can't happen. And it's it never too late. 
yes. to start Absolutely ever not. at any age. Absolutely. Living proof. Absolutely. So more with Andrew when we come back. Natasha's Lips, Tips, and Great Flips is sponsored by Synchronicity Durham. By collaborating within each level of the community, the main purpose of Synchronicity Durham is to empower every open-minded citizen in Durham region with the tools and resources to achieve their greatest dreams, goals, and passions. Welcome back. We are talking to Andrew Camp, a CPA men's national physique athlete. We will be discussing how he transformed his life from weighing over 300 pounds to participating <clears throat> in bodybuilding competitions. It's pretty remarkable. Let me ask you, Andrew, what was the initial motivation that sparked an interest in bodybuilding? Because it's not an everyday thing for people to take your physique to that level. Yeah. Um, I was reading a lot of the magazines mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, obviously being in, 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 in just interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to the Toronto Pro Show in, in, in 2013 mm -hmm. and because I read in one of the magazines that they were introducing a new division. You know, because everybody sees bodybuilding as you have to be this huge, great big huge right. uh, mass monster and you know that wasn't what I was looking for at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, so I went to watch this new division which was called Men's Physique mm -hmm. and uh, you know I watched it and I found it very exciting and then I looked into the regional circuit which was the OPA at the time mm -hmm. um, which is CPA now and uh, looked into how to enter a regional competition, how it worked mm -hmm. and then just did some research online and started the process of getting ready for it. It's amazing because I've seen your bodybuilding <coughs> pictures at like this event. Uh, it's remarkable the discipline and co excuse me the discipline and commitment that it must entail. Mm -hmm. So give us a run through because life happens, but yeah. you still find the time to, uh, you know, put yourself and you know compete. Yeah, I mean it's it's a bit of a sacrifice, obviously, mm -hmm. in regards to being able to eat the things you want to do. I want to eat. Sorry. Um, you know, competing means you follow a structured diet, right. which is set for your body. You work with a coach. I work with a coach oh, now. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially I didn't when I started. I, did. Oh, okay. I coached myself, but I, I, I have a coach. And uh, working with that coach, he sets up a diet for me, and then we structure that diet. And basically it's, the structure is the same six meals a day, every okay. single day. Okay. And the coach tells me when I can have a cheat meal, when oh, I can have okay. something off the diet. So it means that going out for dinner, you know, oh, the different things tricky. like that. Yeah. It's tricky, yeah. you know. Um, Do you bring you know. your own bag? Some, yeah, yeah. I, I have food with me all yeah. the time. That's part of the process. And no being, drinking, I'm assuming. No alcohol. No, yeah. I really don't drink in yeah. general anyway. Um, but yeah, there's no, I mean, if I'm socializing, if I'm out, which mm -hmm. I will, because yeah. like I said, you know, I'm, if I'm with, obviously I'm with somebody, so my girlfriend, and, and we like, she likes to go out, and yeah. my, my drink is water, you That's know. Right. So I make an effort to make sure that That's there's some good. balance, balance you know, between life. the two. Yeah. So, because it is a very selfish, you know, right. Uh, sacrifice. I can understand that. Yes, of yeah. course. What drives you to keep growing and achieving self-mastery in your life, bodybuilding in your life in general? Because you seem to be so driven, mm -hmm. and I think that will, you know, people will resonate with that. And yeah, it has a goal. Yeah, it's just it's just a matter of having that goal and in, in, in sight. It becomes almost like an addiction, right? Um, stepping on stage for the first time. Right. Uh, it, it was inspiring. Like right? it was more like, wow, I want to do this. I, I love doing it. Just, oh, good. It didn't really matter how I placed. Yeah. You know, obviously I placed well my first show automatically, um, and that made it just that much more of fun. Of course. Obviously, everybody. That's huge. Do people place that quickly? Like when you just start? Um, I yeah. Don't, do they yeah, really? It depends. I mean, I guess it just depends on how much work they put into. That's into, true. Uh, the more work you put into it, and the more sacrifice you can make. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't stray from anything. That's and good. You can ask anybody that's around me. They won't. They can. You can just have this little bit of, you know, it's like, no, I'll no. say no. That's good. So, so you're very disciplined, very committed. Very. How are you able to balance your work, daily life, and your four kids, and still train and compete? Like, mm -hmm. you know, for most people, this would deter them from ever even starting. It, it was just a matter of prioritizing my time. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say, that's a, a lot big excuse, right? That people say, I don't have time. Uh, you know, and I, I've, I've, I have four kids, I've been married, I'm in a relationship now. You know, you have to make the time. So my time is when I get up at 4 a.m., I, I make my meals, okay. and then I hit the gym. Six times a week? Five to six. Five to six? Depends. Competition time, you know, it's about six. You know, right now it's about five, so I make sure I'm resting my body properly so I'm avoiding injuries yes, and things like that. So. Yeah. For most people, going mm -hmm. to the gym, like it's a certain mindset, there's like a certain reason. It's a happy pill, mm -hmm. you know, it could be therapy, anger management. For me, it's a happy pill. Mm -hmm. But so what is it for you and how do people find their own reason for going? It's all of the above. All of the above? Sometimes yeah. for me. So I've been through 
a lot of different sure. challenges in my life. Um, and the gym has always been that go-to that's helped me manage those emotions and things almost like free therapy. Yes, leave it at the gym. <laughs> you know, leave it at the gym. <laughs> yeah. So there's been many times I've been to the gym not happy, angry, you know, sad. And then I've, I've gone to the gym very happy. So it's just, it, it's, it's there for me to be able to do something that's good for my body as opposed to doing something that would be bad for my body. Absolutely, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. You're a fitness coach and I'm kind of assuming that uh, your appointment books are gonna fill up very quickly even after this interview. <laughs> I'm just assuming. So how do you plan out some one of your clients kind of meal plan and fitness routine? Take us through that. I think that. it's important, you know, when you're talking to somebody to kind of figure out their lifestyle, you right. know, what works and for them? kind of remember that they're at the same starting point that I was yes, at. Yes, that's true. You know, people forget, you know, yeah, I compete on a national level, I go to the gym every day, it's it's, it's structured in my, my, my mm -hmm. day. Not everybody has that same structure yet. Yes, I didn't have course. it at the time neither. Yeah. So you have to kind of structure something that is doable, mm -hmm, achievable, uh, that makes it, you know, something that's sustainable, mm -hmm. right? If you just throw something at them right. that is just crazy, which I've seen with some yes. trainers that I've seen in the gyms they that I go never to. Come back. Yeah, they they, they, <laughs> they make them jump through hoops and it just oh, wow. it looks very humiliating almost oh, for yeah. these people. Yeah. And, and that's I not what they like want. Like I said, I remember how I felt being of over course. 300 pounds sure. sitting in a gym and then everybody else is in shape around me. That's right. I'm like, I don't feel good, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to make them feel comfortable. And, and the same with dieting. I think that's really important. Yeah, and the same with dieting. So is making something that's going to work for them so that they have some enjoyment, because yeah. everybody does enjoy food, but also remember that food is primarily for function too. Yes, of course. So there has to be a balance. Yeah. Before we go, I need mm -hmm. to have your take. I always ask my guests the takeaway. What is your takeaway? Three top things for our viewers that are watching you. Um, the takeaway is the, if you say you can, you will. If you say you can't, you won't. And I think those are the two primary yeah focal points, you know, and once you get that drive to do it and you see the results yeah. and you kind of look at yourself like, oh my God, I look like that. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and you still have days where you think about how you looked before yes, too, right? So it's, 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 a, it's a constant progress, you know, and you have to kind of tell yourself you can, you can do it. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for being on the show, Andrew. Thank I you. really appreciate, I appreciate you telling us too. your story. Thank you. Up next, we speak with Matthew Gardner. Stay with us. Natasha's Lips, Tips, and Great Flips is sponsored by St. Nadala Macedonian Orthodox Church, located in Ajax, Ontario, offering banquet hall facilities for your weddings, celebrations, and special events, accommodating up to 250 guests. Invictus Equality. We are the mistresses and the masters of our gender equality destiny. Welcome back. Joining us now is Matthew Gardner, founder of Synchronicity Durham, an organization created for making good communities better. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you, Natasha. My pleasure to have you on, Matthew. Having met you previously, I was incredibly moved by the efforts of your organization and fascinated with your personal story in overcoming great difficulties growing up that redirected your path and brought you to where you are now. Well, thank you. And I'm very excited and interested in hearing about this because no one ever starts out knowing everything in life. That's just how it is. It's a process, experience, lots of different factors. Let's talk about some of the challenging times in your past. Sure. So my main thing is growing up in, in a space of conflict with my family. My mom and dad uh, separated when I was three. And for about 15 years of my life growing up, I went between two diametrically opposed households in their thoughts, beliefs, way of living. And I was like this ping pong ball for, right. you know, in, until my uh, late teens. And, and, and initially I internalized all that conflict through anger and anxiety and things like that. And then eventually I started acting out with it and I got involved with the wrong crowd. I uh, even got involved in, in like uh, uh, with the police, had uh, some wow. police calls to my house, quickly realized don't want to go down that road. You don't, that's um, right. <laughs> you know, but I, I did continue with some behavior, I got into like drinking and smoking and that sort of thing, I'd go to bars. And in 2010 was the, the pivotal moment of my awakening, so right. to speak, where I was driving home from a bar, it was 2 a.m. in the morning, on a Monday morning, and ironically, I was gonna begin my fourth year of criminology in school at, wow. at this time, um, six hours later, uh, and I get pulled over for speeding. And at the, this time in my life, I'm, I, I know I'm not doing the right things, but I can't, in my awareness, I don't have 
the answer. I don't know the better way. I don't right. know what it is. Just were you as worried you were about saying. consequences at all? No, at because I was so young, you know, right. I didn't think about that. I felt invincible. But at the same time, I also felt like my luck would run out at some time. So right. I ended up getting pulled over and that escalated to I actually got assaulted by the police on the wow. side of the 401 in, in Pickering, just east of Toronto. And uh, that was the wake up call I needed though, right? I went through a year and a half court process where um, it, it Every month I had to go to downtown Toronto for wow. disclosure and eventually the whole thing got thrown out because the police had lied on the medical report. There oh were actually gosh. no injuries, but the transformation that took place during that year and a half was where it all came together for me. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, it makes perfect sense to be a creator of a company like, or a project like Synchronicity Durham, you would have to. And this is one of the major reasons I wanted you to be on the show because people sometimes can be very identified with like their past and therefore not be given a chance and be judged, you know, to, to maybe not be the person that they were always meant to be. So give us your thoughts on that, coming out the other, other end of that. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a phrase in, in psychology and counseling, it's, it's, well, it's more of a joke, like how many um, psychotherapists does it take for a, a light bulb to change? And, and the uh, answer is it just takes one therapist, but the light bulb must want to change. Right. So that was my aha moment going through that experience. And then I got involved in uh, like-minded groups who were more goal-oriented, success-oriented, helped me get on track and becoming my greatest self. And, mm -hmm. and from that standpoint, that's where it started to take off for me. And in 2014, I had pretty well established my new way of living. Um, started in 2012 where I brought it together. So I had about two years of like real deep inner exploration, self I think you have to, yeah. to be able to come out the other side. So anyone willing to go deep yes. and, and, and be honest with themselves yeah. and realize, hey, we're all telling ourselves stories about self-deceit, yes. lies, sure. limitations. Right uncovering those and bringing awareness to them. That was a pivotal key for me. And it's very uncomfortable. People need to know this is not a comfortable process. Any <laughs> amount of growth and advancing yourself is a challenge. So if you could um, see yourself be from prior experiences, what would you tell yourself at that time? What would you change and why? Well, I'd say get a mentor, get a guide of some kind. Uh, I mean, now it's about getting a coach or having someone to identify those blind spots in your life. But also one of the keys with synchronicity Durham is we have mastermind groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, so get around uh, four people that you really trust, that you know, they, they represent a role model to you in some way, some area of life that you respect them for, mm -hmm. and meet with them every two weeks and get genuine feedback on, on your activities, your, your results, your goals, all that sure. sort of thing. And, and from there you get honest feedback about where you are in life and, and you see yourself not just as you see yourself, but you see it as others see you, and then you see it as the environment sees you, and you see it as the world sees you. See Lots it, you of get, different perspectives. Yeah, 360 happening. degrees. Yes, absolutely. Matthew, what was the hardest and most important lesson that you learned? I think it's, you know, you have to understand the hardships by understanding what lesson you have learned and what you overcame. Because yeah. that's where true growth, you know, happens. And you can't do it on your own. You that can't. was the biggest thing. Yes, that's Yeah, I, I was trying all the ways to be uh, selfish with my life. And, you know, I just came to a roadblock, quite literally, where I, you know, got beat up. So, yes. you know, yeah. Um, how can we overcome our struggle, struggles and obstacles in our life and come out the other side better than we were? Because usually we are better, even mm -hmm. though it's difficult and challenging, even with, you know, you're running with the police. I mean, that was the moment, I think, that really changed your trajectory. Yeah. If yeah. you kind of can step back and see 100%. It. And yes. at the time, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And I think you have to really have that burning desire for it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things Napoleon uh, Hill talks about in his book, Thinking We're Rich, is having that burning desire. And I have sort of my own definition of that idea. But when that internal motivation comes out where you're just automatically taking action, on greater possibility for yourself and you're becoming a greater person automatically, mm -hmm. it's, it's a challenge, but you're willing to see it through to the other side. I think that's where the rubber meets the road. Um, you can have a, a goal, but in, in, unless there's that emotional charge behind it, it's more of just a wish and, and you're not really taking automatic action on it. Yes, I would agree with you. In what way would your life be different now if you didn't create Synchronicity Durham, having the support of like-minded people, having the epiphanies that you've had, you know, meeting people on a regular basis, mm -hmm. supporting incredible people that have dreams? <laughs> like me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that would have never happened. But, but I mean, there's lots of people that don't have that wake up call or they don't listen to it, right? Like they get a sledgehammer at the door, but that's not enough, right? Mm -hmm. And then 
they end up in prison or they end up um, dead in a lot of cases, like people that go down that life of crime, right? Which I had very minor tastings of, just enough to realize, hey, that's not the road I want. Yes, so what is the global mission? Because I think that this can be, this philosophy can be applied globally, synchronicity Durham. Yeah. That, you know, pulling yeah. together in yeah. community and like-minded people and supporting each other. So mm -hmm. what is your like vision for it? Well, the, our motto is connect, create, celebrate. So it's really about bringing together people from, from all walks from of all life, walks. all across the world, and connecting with life, connecting with the messages that life brings us every right. day, connecting with our self-actualized state of being, mm -hmm. and then creating our greatest self, creating passion projects, creating experiences for one another to engage in and, and have that um, communal type yes. of experience. And, and then celebrate, celebrate our success, yes. celebrate the little wins, celebrate the big wins, celebrate life itself, because it's all about having fun. Absolutely, and before we go, your takeaway, three points that you wanna share with our viewers. Yeah, well, I, I'd say be yourself is the biggest thing That's I right. learned, is I, I spent all my life lying to myself, trying to be somebody else, listening to the media. It never so works, does it? It doesn't work. No. Learn the hard way. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So be yourself. Number two is uh, follow inspiration. So whatever inspires you, whatever excites you, whatever lights you up in life, I would say in the little ways and in the big ways, capitalize on that, follow it through. And third and final point, have zero insistence or assumption about where it's taking you. You don't need to know the final destination. You just need to know what you're doing today in this Trust moment the process. and enjoy it. Thank you, Matthew, for being a part of the show. I greatly appreciate you sharing your story. Thank you, Natasha. Absolutely. That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Natasha's Lips, Tips, and Great Flips is sponsored by AMMA Ajax Mixed Martial Arts Academy, offering classes in Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for all men and women. Sign up now for your free one-month membership. Also offering Women's Strength and Conditioning Body Blast Boot Camp. Includes a one-week free trial. St. Nadala Macedonian Orthodox Church, located in Ajax, Ontario, offering banquet hall facilities for your weddings, celebrations, and special events, accommodating up to 250 guests. Invictus Equality. We are the mistresses and the masters of our gender equality destiny. Synchronicity Durham. By collaborating within each level of the community, the main purpose of Synchronicity Durham is to empower every open-minded citizen in Durham region with the tools and resources to achieve their greatest dreams, goals, and passions.